Canadians on edge to either watching all this unfold or directly caught up in it. Thousands were in Boston to race or to cheer on the marathoners. Tonight, Foreign Affairs is confirming no Canadians are among the dead or the injured. Many, though, are still shaken by what they saw. Jen Tryon is in Boston tonight as it has been speaking to Canadians caught up in all this. Jen? Donna, of the 23,000 runners here in Boston yesterday, 2,000 of them were from Canada, and thousands more were their loved ones here, they thought, just to cheer them on. We were across the street. His dad, one of the 2,083 Canadians in the herd. Len Stanmore told his family, stand on the right side of the street so he could see them on the way by. He never made it that far. With the first blast, there was just a, a huge bang and then a, a, a large plume of smoke. For nearly 12 seconds, they were a safe distance. Then came blast number two. You felt the heat from the explosion of the second of the second bomb, and you felt the impact of it. It was like someone punched you right in the chest. In a flash, the Toronto family was buried under the plume of the second bomb. It just went through my mind last night. If you said left, and we happened to be standing on the opposite side of the street, we could have been killed. Putting them 40 meters in front of death and destruction instead of in it. I mean, people have been blown apart. They're dead. Very briefly, you just you saw parts or things on the road in front of us basically you were so traumatized you just kind of quickly turned and, and tried to get into a safe place it's horrendous actually it's a nightmare call it fate or just dumb luck so I decided to go get a drink and then had it not been for thirst Kiki Cloutier's father Paul wouldn't be returning home to Toronto with his daughter originally I was exactly where the first bomb went off um, I uh, was standing right beside the garbage can, in fact. Priority number one at the crack of dawn, get out of Boston. I'm extremely thankful he wasn't standing around there at that time, because there was a lot of people. People separated from their runners. Like most, the Canadians were unfamiliar with Boston's city streets, with no sense of where to go or how to get there. Phone lines completely cut off. That was the worst part. Absolutely. We yeah. didn't know where Len was. We could see our hotel in the distance. That was a little comforting, but you're still walking past all these things that may or may not explode. It took more than an hour and a half for Len to reunite with his family. He made his way back to his hotel on tired legs, his family waiting, relieved, elated, and ready to leave Boston, taking with them so many questions. But what if for us, if we'd stayed by the finish line, and what if we chose the left side of the road? And, and bigger than what if remains why. And Jen, that is the question everyone's asking tonight. No one went to this marathon expecting anything like this. What struck you about how people have responded to it? Well, of course, apart from the fatalities and the devastating injuries, the Canadians that we spoke to, almost in true Canadian form, said they were struck by the fact that even though it was chaotic, it wasn't a stampede. It wasn't every person for themselves. Instead, there was a feeling of people helping people. That's a sentiment this city is going to need going forward. Donna. All right, Jen Tryon in Boston tonight. Thank you.